What you guys got? How was uh, Traylon's week of work? Yeah, of work good. Today? Still, still, again, needs the final uh, blessing, you know, but um, doing well. And, and again, it was, um, he hadn't been in meetings, you know, for three weeks. So getting back into it, um, I, I would say pleasantly surprised just for his ability to go through those meetings and practice and, um, you know, so a lot of stuff that go in there and just glad that he was able to, to retain some information. So, you know, see if he clears and, and what role he may have in the game, but just still waiting for that final um, blessing from the doctor. You were probably told us at some point over the years, but did you ever have a concussion when, when you were playing? Okay. But yeah. Was it, was it? I mean, I've, I've said this from early on, just having played this game and having kids that play this game and uh, still do. Um, we, we understand that they all are, are different, just like every other injury. Uh, we've always told the players to, to be honest. You know, this is not the time to um, try to be a tough guy. If you're not feeling right, we've had players. Um, we have asked players to, you know, how a guy normally acts and feels, and if he doesn't, you guys, nobody's closer to them than, than the players. So showed example of maybe last year or the year before with, uh, I think, Aguilar, maybe a Patriot uh, receiver when he was with the Patriots and helping, you know, a player that clearly wasn't, you know, himself. So try to show all those different examples of, of opportunities. And you know, whenever they pass through the protocol, we, we check in on them, we bring them in here, um, and then, you know, that's how we handle it. But we treat them very seriously. It was it different maybe for you? Well, yeah, there wasn't. Than the, yeah, I mean, there wasn't a protocol. I mean, let's. We're not. I'm not going to go down. Right, right, right. What What was different and what's the same about, you know, 2002 and 2023? That's. I don't think that does us any good. Which when a guy clears the protocol, is it? I guess. Are you ever hesitant to just give him the full load again right away? Well, or? based on how much time away, you uh -huh. know. Uh, and in this case, that this is probably an extended period of time. So I think that we just have to figure out what it is that, you know, the, the player feels confident in and, and what we feel confident in him doing and making sure that he knows what to do and not putting him in situations that, you know, he may not be, you know, prepared for just because of the time, time off. This might be a better question for him, but what's the advantage of the brace or the halo he's got around? Well, that's something that, again, you would have to ask. I know that, you know, Luke Keekley. I remember Luke wearing it. I've seen you know, Schultz wear it. I saw Pollard wear it. And, you know, some technology that, that may or may not, you know, again, that would be something that you'd have to ask Traylon that wasn't around uh, when I played. What's the uh, learning curve been like for uh, uh, Wallace and Edmonds, you feel like, since they've been here? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they're working hard. And, you know, Kayvon's. You know, been in there and has made some plays and shown up and you know, taking advantage of his opportunities and just working in there with with Elijah and then you know, Terrell's doing the same thing. With those guys being veterans, like coming from another team in the middle of the year, how difficult was it, was it to kind of like get them to know the signals, kind of deprogram them and then reprogram them? Yeah, I think the, 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 that's the hard part. The easy part is just saying, you know, that you're playing and they've, they've played in games, they've tackled, they've played on special teams or they play, played safety and you know, chances are that they would know the technique. It just may be called something differently. So that's probably the hardest thing is to um, focus on that and those signals at home, uh, making sure that you don't take things for granted uh, with a player that's relatively new. Have you found anything to work better in, in particular situations like as far as like getting them to, to know the hand signals quickly? Uh, better. I mean, I think we just know one way is just to work. And, and I said this since Book's been here. He shows up early. Uh, has met with um, numerous players that we've had, uh, whether that's uh, rookies or players during the season, uh, that to try to get them ready to play. And he's done that with them as well in the morning and meetings afterwards. You know, making them use the hand signals at practice and the communication, the visual. Uh, communication. What's the challenge for coaching staff when the two teams know each other so well, like you and the Colts, and, and usually like is in, in all division games? Well, I mean, just making sure that your players are ready to go and understanding that in these, uh, just like the game was close uh, the first time, it's just the, the critical situations and.
at the end of the day, just making sure that the players are, are confident and, you know, they're, they're, they're ready to, to know what situation may present. They could be in something different. They could do something different. But for the majority of the time, it's, hey, here's what we're doing. This is a banked rep. Had this in the plan last time. Didn't run it. Think it may apply. Um, you know, showing them where we can improve. Showing them um, differences in technique or the players that may be different. You know, Stewart and how he is different than, you know, than some of the other interior players that may be you know, smaller, faster, um, quicker, uh, and just different play styles. Mike, last time you you, uh, you guys played the Colts, DeAndre had a lot of success. Uh, their corners. Um, what are you seeing maybe different uh, about their back end now or maybe the, the kind of growth um, that, that you're seeing just on, on film? Well, they remain pretty consistent in what they do um, as far as coverage. You know, so I think that there's the ability to do the same thing, not every single time, but the majority of the time something that has gotten them to improve. They've got good length. Um, you know, I think the, they work well together as a unit, you know, with, with the attacking, penetrating front um, that, that is, is, you know, forcing quarterbacks off the spot, getting them to move. Uh, linebackers do a good job in, in the underneath zone coverage. Um, and, they, and they have length. You know, they have guys with length and that are, you know, they challenge. And so whether they're impressed or off, it's kind of what I've seen here. And they, you know, we'll mix it up against this as well. How's your physical cornerback play against a guy who's physical like Pittman versus against a guy, uh, I, I don't know, who maybe doesn't, doesn't like it as much? How's, how's that kind of differentiate itself over the course of a game? And how much is, do you go into it with an awareness of the crew? And how, how oh, well, the crew, I mean, it's the crew we had against Cleveland. It called us for a couple, and you know, clearly that's a, that's a factor. And, you know, just got to play aggressive, play, play with good technique. You know, sometimes I would say just the biggest thing is, you know, going back to just simple logic is if a little guy doesn't want contact, try to create it. If a big guy wants contact, try to avoid it as far as cover. You know what I mean? You try to go and nail a little guy you end up with nothing and you go and you try to nail a big guy and he's licking his chops and he flippers you I and mean, that goes all the way back to when I tried to cover guys and coach would tell me that and I try to tell him the same thing if a guy's trying to avoid contact try to create it and if they're trying to create contact try to avoid it and nobody's out